Welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Last time we made our way to this spirit temple, but we couldn't really enter as an adult. So instead, we went back in time in order to enter as a child. This is a pretty good dungeon, at least when it came to recording, because it meant that I can actually split the dungeon into two parts, because there are two parts of it. Enough with the meta stuff though. Right outside was Naburu, but of course we can't, you know, do anything with her, because we're a child that came out wrong. There are a lot of chances to encounter fire keys in this dungeon, so unless you want your Deku shield getting burned, you should equip the Hylian shield. You'd probably think, well, this is the spirit temple. What kind of elemental property is spirit? I probably can't give you a straight answer. In terms of the child half of the temple, it's kind of a tutorial for some of the mechanics that we'll encounter in the adult half. Killing all the enemies in this room will open up both of the doors, but you want to go through the one on the left because the area kind of loops around and you'll end up on the one on the right anyway. There's a Stalfos in this room and we're Young Link trying to kill it, so it'll take a bit longer, but we can kind of stab him in the knees as this version of Link. It's easier to hit him, but it takes more hits. I do think that it is also possible to kind of drive him to the edge and push him off. Well, not push, but like get him to fall off. So if you're having trouble defeating him with normal sword play, you could also try to smash bros him off the stage. Of course, there are other ways to beat him, like using bombs or your boomerang, but I decided to go the tried and true, you know, sword to sword method. This giant green bubble here is intimidating but not very hard to beat. You can't hit him while the fire's up as with other bubbles. Well, unless you're using like arrows or something. So you need to stun him with the boomerang or wait until the fire goes out and then hit him with your slingshot. There was a switch there that you had to curve the boomerang around of the, the bridge that falls down in order to hit it. It's not too difficult, you just gotta push it to the left because, or throw it to the left because the boomerang curves around to the right. This enemy right here, it's like an Anubis, I don't remember exactly what the name is, but they're weak to fire. And luckily that switch over there creates a pillar of fire, so if you stand opposite of him because the way he moves is opposite of you, and you know, make him stand in the ring of fire then hit the switch, you could kill him. Or you could just use Din's fire at the expense of some magic. This temple also has wall masters. Yes, they will come down and grab you, and if you do get grabbed, you're sent to the beginning of the dungeon, but it's not all that much of a trek. But it is, you know, useless to go back, so you want to kill him as soon as you enter the room so that he won't bother you anymore. Because once you kill them, they don't return. There are a bunch of keys on the opposite side of this grate here, and you can actually hit them if they're like sitting on the grate, not if they're flying around near it. So if you want to kill them, you'll have to wait for them to stand still. They can't actually hurt you from behind the gate, even though you can hurt them. So if you want to climb on the gate and collect all the silver rupees, you can do so without having much of a hassle. The Gold Sculptula will do some damage to you if you climb near him, I think, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Although, he will knock you down and you'll have to climb back up again. But, me and my epic pro strats are gonna take him out real easily. Just drop down, press the B button, and you'll do a jump attack, and, you know, kill the Sculptula. I don't think I ever mentioned that before. If you press the sword button after jumping off of a ledge or something like that, Link will do a jump attack. It will also still carry the properties of a jump attack, so it'll do double damage. This is how I deal with the keys. I'm gonna wait for them to get past the bridge that I just created, and then kill them like that. That's actually not a very good method, because not only will they go for you, but if one gets past you, it can go for the fire and turn to a fire keys. Again, you want to have either the Hylian shield equipped, or just let your shield burn so that you won't get a message that says your shield burned. These two torches right here, you can take, you know, a Deku stick to the torch that's across the bridge and then bring it over here. 
Or you could just use Din's fire to light them both. And then a treasure chest will appear. There's a key inside of it. We haven't seen a locked door yet, but we will in a little bit. As I said before, the rooms that we were going through kind of make a circle, so once we exit through here, we'll be back in the original room. Sans enemies. Going through this crawly hole here will reveal our locked door. There's also a couple of boxes around that you can cut down and get a couple of items from. Bombs and Deku Nuts. One of which I won't be using at all in this dungeon. The other I'll probably use once. Of course there are Skulltrulas on these walls, so you gotta shoot them down with your slingshot. But in shooting them down, you'll hear that the noise hasn't quite ended. There's another gold Skulltrula on the opposite of this climbing wall, so once you get up to the top, Turn around, equip your boomerang, and shoot it down. And then of course use the boomerang to actually collect the token, don't just leave it there. If you do end up leaving a Skulltrula token, the skull and like leave the area, the Skulltrula will respawn and then you'll have to kill it again to try to get the item again. There is a bombable boulder up there that the game wants you to take a bomb chew and throw up there. They will actually give you bomb chews in this room, but I just do a, you know, a well-timed bomb throw and open it that way. Um, there are Lizalfos in this room, but luckily there is no way for them to jump around and away from you, so you can kill them pretty easily. I say Lizalfos as only one appears. But uh, if you shoot the switch in this room, then two treasure chests will appear. One of them will contain 5 rupees, although I do think that the 5 rupee chest will contain a Deku shield if you happen to burn your previous one, and the other chest will contain bomb chews. This is actually the first time we can get bomb chews as an equipable item. Well, not the first time we can get it, the first time we have it. We could actually have gotten them a lot earlier if we actually won the bomb chew minigame when bomb chews were an available prize. You need to push this statue off of the edge because below it is a blue switch and blue switches need to be held down in order to function properly so that's really the only option you have. Pots can't be put down after you pick them up. The only way to get rid of them is to, you know, shield which will drop them exactly where you are but they'll break or you throw them. In this game you can't just drop a pot without it breaking. There are two torches here. You can use Din's fire or probably some uh, torches. There is a torch at the top of the staircase that we kind of came from. Like, at the door that we came from, there's a staircase. And there's a torch up there. And you could use it to light these two torches. Anyway, the item that we're going to get is the dungeon map. It's not all that useful because the dungeon is about halfway over. You need to climb back up to where we were essentially where we entered the room, and then climb the stairs to find another door. And that was the door that we can't get through unless we push the, um, the statue onto the switch. And there's the torch on the right. See it? And also Navi flies over there. There's a gold sculpture over there too. Navi flying there means that we can play the Scarecrow song once we come back here as an adult because that is actually one of the few rooms that adult and young Link share in this temple. This room is the last room, well, kind of the last room, the last puzzle room that young Link has to go through in this dungeon, and it shows because this is like the final boss of puzzle rooms. There's like the gold, not the gold, the silver rupees to collect, there's the beamos around that can hurt you, there's the spiky slidey things, and there's some block pushing though some very simple block pushing. On top of all of that, there's also a torch puzzle to do in the room, as you can see by all the torches, and I use puzzle very loosely. This room has sort of what I mean by uh, a tutorial for the adult version of the temple. There's a switch here, a sun switch, and in order to turn the sun switch on, you have to bring the switch into the sunlight. We actually encountered a switch just like this one before, except it was in the room where you had to bomb the wall in order to let sunlight in. And if it's nighttime, this shouldn't work, but 
that's just, you know, taking game logic at face value, which is kind of worthless except for entertainment purposes, so I'm just gonna stop talking about it. Either way, get the switch into the light, or put light on the switch, and it'll activate, allowing whatever happens to happen. All it did though was open the door to the exit of this room. We need to do the rest of the puzzle. First, by collecting all of the silver rupees around. I was gonna say silver coins. There is a way to make things a bit easier for yourself, although it will take a lot longer. If you push all the blocks so that they kind of corner the, the sliding spike things, if you do that, then the spike things won't be able to move, and so you can get around this room pretty safely. Although, again, it's going to take a long time, so I'd rather not do that. And now the torch has finally lit, so we can take our Deku stick and light the three torches around this room. These torches are like others in that they are only lit for a limited amount of time. After that, they won't be lit anymore, so you're going to have to be quick about going around this room. Don't worry about having to put away the Deku stick to preserve them, because once you hit a torch with a Deku stick, it stays alight for longer. It kind of resets the timer on it, so you don't have to constantly put it away and then take it back out. Just have it stay near the torch and it, it'll it stay alight forever, at least until the torch goes out. But then the stick will be on the torch while on fire, so it'll light the torch again. You'll basically have an unlimited source of fire. Anyway, now that we lit all those torches, we can get into this next room, which has a Sculptula in it. You can hear it as soon as you enter, and it's kind of missable if you don't have the volume up, I suppose. But this game is all about looking around the rooms that you're in and such, so if you're not doing that, I'm not going to say you're not playing the game right, but continue playing the game by doing that. This is the locked door that we needed a key for and a very bombastic looking room. This enemy right here is called an Iron Knuckle. It's a very tough enemy. Those swings will do a lot of damage, and I am doing the wrong kind of dodges here. It'll do a vertical swing or a horizontal swing, or rather a pair of horizontal swings. When it does the vertical swings, what you actually kind of want to do is do a sidestep, but the backflip covers so much distance that you don't really have to. When it does the horizontal swings, then you kind of want to do a backflip. But since, you know, the backflip covers so much distance, it doesn't matter. After hitting it a few times, its armor will come off, then it'll get a bit faster and actually start blocking your moves. But it's, it's not that difficult of an enemy. It's easily provoked if you get near it, and then doing a jump attack after that is super easy because it stays stunned for a while. It can also break down the pillars and the throne that it's sitting on, if you're down some hearts, they'll reveal three hearts apiece, and if you're full on hearts, it'll instead show rupees. We have one last meeting with Kepora Gebora, and it's some actually useful information. Although, at first he just talks about how he never could have imagined that there's a kid who can travel forward and back through time, even though we shouldn't know that. I mean, he is a sage. This is Rauru, just in a bird form, Rauru being the Sage of Light who gave us the free medallion right after we picked up the Master Sword. In our eyes, I mean for him it probably was seven years of waiting. And seriously, he says, do you want to hear what he said again? Even though I'm pretty sure the last couple times he didn't say that. It's super inconsistent, but whatever. And it actually is nighttime. The sunlight, you know, switches shouldn't have been able to turn on. We don't have sunlight. Anyway, we got the silver gauntlets, which is what Naburu wanted, but they don't fit a child, so we might as well give them to her. It's not like we can turn into an adult in the blink of an eye or anything like that. Obtaining the silver gauntlets is pretty much your goal for this half of the dungeon. Once you obtain them, you're pretty much done. There's no heart container for it, but we didn't really fight an enemy that's considered a boss, so it doesn't really matter. And also, Noburu is getting sucked up in this weird sand pit black hole thing. We promised her that we'd give her the silver gauntlets, but 
It doesn't look like we'll be able to keep that promise. It's not like we can go forward in time seven years and use them ourselves or anything like that. And now Nabru is dead-ish. I'm pretty sure she doesn't have any plot significance, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just continue on with our lives of dungeoneering and side questing. Since there's no reason to go back to the temple, you could just jump off. And if you hold the control stick forward, Link will show off his hardcore parkour skills and absorb the impact by rolling. So there's really no harm in jumping down unless you just don't hold the stick and take like half a heart of damage, which isn't that bad considering we have like 16 hearts right now. We're going to warp to the Temple of Time, but not to become an adult and do the other half of the Spirit Temple. I say half as if it'll take as long as this episode, it won't, it'll take a bit longer. But we're going to be going to Kakariko instead, specifically to the House of Skultula. We currently have 50 Skultula tokens, which means that all of the children are back to their normal selves. The father here isn't back to normal. In order to bring him back to normal, you need to collect all 100 Skultula tokens. But I only care about the prizes up to 50, so I'm not going to, you know, deal with that. For 40, we get a bomb chew, and then for 50, we're getting the prize that I actually care about, for the most part, a piece of heart. I've got all the prizes I want, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop collecting the Skulltulas. It's just, if I know they're there, I just have the impulse to collect them for some reason. But that's the end of this part. Next time, we're going to be entering the adult version of the Spirit Temple.